Welcome, everyone, to another edition of To Your Health, a program designed to bring you information on healthy living, featuring those who make a healthy living lifestyle possible. I'm your host, Fred Zucker, coming to you from the campus of Parker University in Dallas, Texas. Today, our special guest is Dr. Dar Griffith. Dr. Dar, welcome. Well, thank Glad you, you Fred. I appreciate it, sir. Dr. Dar is a Parker alumnus, class of 2005. Seems like only yesterday, I'm sure, Dr. Dar, that you're Absolutely. making yesterday that walk plus. Across, uh, across the stage. Yeah. Now, we're recording today's program on May the 9th, and May is National Correct Posture Month. Dr. Griffith is an expert on treatment of extremities and the impact of postural patterns on health. I recently heard Dr. Griffith present on this topic at Parker Seminars in Baltimore. He did an excellent job. I took copious notes to make sure sure. I caught every bit of the (laughs) wisdom. But first, we'd like to ask Dr. Griffith to give us a little bit of background on how he came to be in the position he's in now, one of the innovators in chiropractic Mm -hmm. care and healthcare innovation. Dr. Griffith, give us just a little background. Well, that information. Was, that was very kind of you to say. I, I, I was very fortunate uh, to fall into the role of chiropractor. My, most of my background uh, as a hospital corpsman in the Navy and then working in orthopedics for over eight years was more medically centric. Uh, it took other series of events, uh, misadventures, and a few other decisions that actually pointed me in the direction of chiropractic care. And uh, Kind of a funny story. I, I, I started in the program uh, because my wife was working for a chiropractor who just needed some orthopedic or rehabilitation services mm. done in his office. Yeah. And I didn't realize he was a chiropractor. He was just another doctor. Another doctor. Was, yeah, working in there. Uh, but he was a, a Gonstead practitioner, and he was showing me all the specifics about how you evaluate a patient. And it very much struck me as something that I could find myself, see myself doing. Yeah. And within a very short period of time, I was asking him questions, and of course, he directed me to his college, which now is mine, which is Parker University. Ah, Parker alumnus. He is. Uh, Back in the days when Mr. Jim was here, Mm -hmm. uh, and Dr. Ken Moore, he's still up in Denton, still practicing, doing a great job. And uh, I came up here on a Thursday, uh, met with Opal, and she got me through the program, and we turned in my transcripts on Thursday, Friday. I started classes on Monday. And then the rest of it kind of, as you would say, is history in the making. I I really took to the idea of how chiropractic could improve uh, human functionality and optimize the abilities for a person to be better than they are uh, using chiropractic care. And it's just proven itself time and time again over the years uh, to be one of the forefront efforts in alternative health care. And it's really uh, helped me see a benefit in trying to prepare my patients for what's coming in terms of stress and healthcare opportunities. So it's right. been a great job. And chiropractic is on the, the leading edge of the revolution that's taking place in healthcare in Absolutely. the United States and probably worldwide. And part of that is the recognition that certain things that we do routinely may not be the best for us, our diet, <laughs> sleep, exercise, and posture. We take it for granted. We don't pay enough attention to it. Uh, we've heard the the saying now that sitting is the new smoking. Oh, yeah. And there's no question about it. Posture does play a role in overall health. But give us your take on that, Dr. Griffith. You're an expert, and we'd love to hear what you have to say about it. I think that's actually very apropos, saying that it's uh, sitting is the new smoking. You know, the, the postural stress that most of us experience isn't necessarily uh, actively done these days. Uh, you know, the advent of the Internet and the different changes that we've had from you know, certainly over the, the centuries from being more hunter-gatherer to right. being this more sedentary type of community has definitely changed our, our perspective on the health risks right. that we experience. Posture's a huge one. And it's also a commonality between the disciplines within healthcare to recognize. You know, a lot of times it's very difficult to explain your passion about the chiropractic philosophy and principles that surround our abilities to interact with our patients on a very different level than several folks in the healthcare community. But posture is one specific thing that we can all kind of agree on. You know, and when you say the word, you, you know, as I'm doing right now, mm-hmm. yes, you know, and you fix Put your yourself, shoulders back, tuck shoulders your back, you right. got it. All right. those things that we know to be true innately uh, become more uh, obvious to us. Yeah. Take, for instance, if you're driving down the road and you take a look at the driver to the next, uh, to the left of you and to the right of you, you'll notice that their head forward posture is just mm-hmm. so exaggerated while they're driving. Uh, or if you can just push in a grocery cart in the local grocery store, you can see how, how labored mm-hmm. people are over the top of that thing, kind of in that 
forward posture, which creates a lot of postural stress. But even more so, when you think about posture, you it sort of do take it for granted that mm -hmm. a good posture is X and a bad posture is Y. But what does that bad posture then lead to? Right that specifically chiropractic can particularly address and even more so help correct. And I think for us as chiropractors, it's, it's another good tool. It's another aspect of the healthcare community that we could, you know, there's tons of degeneration that's going on out there. Oftentimes is a secondary part of postural stress right. and uh, as a way to better communicate uh, to the other healthcare providers that we're not just neck and back doctors. We can work on wrist, elbows and shoulders, feet, knees and hips if, as I've been exposed to. I, I was very fortunate early on in my chiropractic career to get some exposure into some true mentors and the idea that outside of the spine, all of these peripheral appendages of ours mm -hmm. feed in the neurological affect that changes both due to postural demands and to the neurological health and or chiropractic health of every patient. So that's a real big part of uh, how I feel and how I see my patients chiropractically getting better. Right. Well, I know that one of your mentors has been Dr. Mark Charette. Absolutely. Dr. Charette has been a guest on this program. Yeah. He received the Lifetime Achievement Award at Parker Dallas Seminar last year and very well deserved in that case. Well, that, now that we know that posture is important, it seems to me that there are there've got to be many things that we can do to improve our posture. I'm sure there are exercises and but also just what can we do from a common sense everyday perspective to help us be more mindful of our posture? Yeah, I think that's a great question, but I think I would go and start first with, you know, everybody everybody every person has a unique postural arrangement. You know, uh, depending on what research you read, there could be up to 385 million different postural alterations or presentations a patient may have just mm. in the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar spine alone, not including the you know, feet, knees, hips, wrist, elbows, shoulders, mm -hmm. uh, which Dr. Shred has taught me a, a great deal about over the years. Right. But specific to that end, if we're looking to improve it, we need to first have a better way to assess it. And luckily for us, chiropractic uh, misalignments and fixations and subluxation, whatever the verbiage is that you choose to evaluate your patients based on, is a good starting point. Because in all of those situations, there are common global postural distortions that are tied to them. Mm -hmm. And so for every patient that walks in the door who's got an ache or a complaint or you know, anybody over a certain age, this certainly got some level of degenerative changes that they're having to deal with. Almost all of those are tied to some postural affect. In mm -hmm. fact, many of the techniques we have in chiropractic are tied directly to an evaluation related to posture, whether it's... Uh, integrator, activator, Gonstead, diversified. Uh, doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. There's some aspect that they're all tied to relative to a postural evaluation, and it's a good starting point. But chiropractically, if you're addressing those fixations and misalignments and improving the functionality of movement, to your point, how you then readdress it to improve upon your posture mm -hmm. is, one, making sure that the joints that support you are free to move to whatever the range of motion that they have. You know, not everybody's going to have full range all the time. Right. But if they're moving enough that the neurological input has corrective changes, that's where you start. You can always add the exercise. And again, you can tailor it to the specificity right. of a person based on their activity, their lifestyles, and the things that they can do. But neurologically, I think there's more input with the chiropractic adjustment and an education of how you dictate your posture based on environmental stressors mm -hmm. and the neurology behind all that stress response then really dictates how they'll respond to correcting the postural things that put them to that point. Right. Well, one of the things that you said at the seminar in Parker, which struck me was the kinetic chain mm -hmm. and the impact, the, literally the impact of the foot strike has on everything with the body. And I've certainly been aware of that. I've, I've been an athlete over the course of my misspent youth. <laughs> <laughs> and now my body's cashing the checks that it wrote 50 years ago. Mm. So I, I'm sort of paying the bill now for all the, the damage I've done. And as you one ages, the greater chance of falling and, and just the body's position in space changes. I'm sure all that has you know, important postural components to it. Absolutely. In fact, that's one of the base principles and the neurological definition of what good posture is all about. That sense of equilibrium and kinesthesia involved in the kinetic chain, 
drives the neurological markers to be responsive to whatever the you know, postural alterations or environmental stressors uh, you get hit with. Right. And so you're, you're absolutely correct. As you age, that process slows down and, and or it's altered or affected because of postural changes over time. And it's very important for uh, all of us, even as we're aging and as we're cashing those checks, which mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the middle of the, the beginning part of my payback for yeah. years of playing volleyball and they're, God knows what else I've exposed myself to. They're all to. out there. They're all out there. They are. And as we're looking closely as, as it's tied to the postural stress we talked about, you know, in a weight-bearing state, when your foot does hit the ground and you begin to ambulate and move, all the postural stress that your body goes through has to be accommodated, has to be adapted to, has to change. And as long as things are working optimally, you can have those changes that don't really affect structure and you can mm. continue to function, albeit uh, as a little slower than, right. uh, than I once Slowing was. Down, right. Yeah, yeah. But still effective uh, with an efficiency that's tied back to that neurological definition, an efficiency of movement that doesn't affect structural change. Mm -hmm. So it, it, as long as, as the body as a whole can continue to function at a high rate, you can have slower activities. And, but the response, as you said, that when there's a disaffrontation or some sort of aberrant movement in a spinal segment or a joint somewhere in the body, you know, there are 206 bones, there's 384 potential uh, articulating surfaces in, in that structure. You can run into neurological defect with any one or all of those mm -hmm. things at any one time. Uh, right. And if it's enough to create an action potential, then you get neurological compromise to the extent of being clumsy and right. tripping and falling. And as right. we get older, if you're not feeding the system enough with neurological input that's good, regular activity, good movement patterns, uh, normal stress, mm -hmm. and avoiding the things that are abnormally stressing, uh, that might be your sleeping posture or mm -hmm. your sitting posture at work, uh, any number of things that we could tie to more of a, a reason why it's imp super important for a chiropractor to be involved in every patient's lifestyle choices, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to those things that we can actually affect quite quickly. And when you're looking at it from a neurological standpoint, because a lot of that can be turned on and off simply by just doing a really good adjustment in the right area right. because you evaluated it that way. Right. And I'm sure that things like sleep patterns, mm. sleep physiology uh, are affected by what I know most about, and that's attitude. <laughs> and if, if one is not mindful of those things, you know, you begin to, to do less, you lose that functionality. Right. So I think so much of, of what happens with people as they age is you begin to, to listen to what people say about aging that you shouldn't do anymore, that you should cut back. Right. Which I think is counter to what you <laughs> should be doing. It should be active, more active, or at least, you know, within reason, within yeah. reason. And, and, and agreed. And conceptually, uh, you know, and I, I'm, I'm the worst, uh, you know, Dr. Hill myself. Right. Uh, I still want to go run triathlons. I still want to do adventure racing. I still want to jump off of cliff tops and, and swing on ropes. But being mindful of all of that, uh, tailoring it, as I said earlier, to what you're capable of, but not necessarily with the limitation that you're going to hurt yourself, right? Right, right. So in, in your case, you're still a pretty buff guy, Dr. Zucker. Hey, I, yeah. I keep yeah. trying. Doing you know, really well. Every yeah. day, it's a new day. <laughs> it, it is indeed. And, and, and for you or for me or for anybody else that might be listening in, if you can look at the things that you enjoy doing and remember to, much like everything else that we do, with moderation, push yourself to a reasonable limit and challenge yourself. Mm -hmm. As long as you continue to do that, your body will continue to respond appropriately. And you know, time is the limitation for all of us in all right, things. Right. But being mindful of the good parts of how you can stress that system to get it to respond appropriately. Absolutely. A normal amount of stress, right. will, the body will respond. Right. It's an amazing, amazing machine. I know, it's remarkable that it continues to heal itself even when we do bad things to it. <laughs> But I'm sure nutrition, hydration, you know, we keep hearing more and more about that. I was reading an article today that salt, apparently, salt intake has a different effect than we thought it had for 150 years. Mm -hmm. That actually causes less, less uh, need to, to have water and may actually cause loss of weight. And some kind of experiment they're doing in Russia with cosmonauts on the ground and they've, been, they've changed their salt intake. I guess it depends on what, what you've read last. Right? Yeah, well, and I would imagine, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, that'll all change and it'll be something else. It'll be your calcium intake from all right. of the, 
you know, hor- hormone-fed beef and products and, and milk products that are out there on the market and whatnot. Exactly. But for each one of those items, it's funny you mentioned sleep and nutrition and, uh, you know, activity levels. Those are the key components to every good lifestyle choice. Sleeping patterns alone for patients who sleep on their stomach, obviously there's, you know, morphological changes that occur mm-hmm. over time. You can actually see that on x-ray. I always thought that was was really interesting. You actually see it. Yeah. Hey, you're a stomach sleeper. Yeah. And you turn your head to the left. How do you know that? Well, the cervical spine's all turned Here to one it side. Is, right. And you can explain that. Uh, same thing for, you know, whether you sleep on your back or sleep on your side or even the circumference of your neck and your ability to breathe while you're sleeping. There mm-hmm. seems to be some correlation to that as well. But nutritional intake is also a key component, not one that you would necessarily think relative to posture, but the postural stress mechanisms specific to the neurology uh, are tied heavily to B vitamins. Mm -hmm. And as a nutritional component, it's water soluble for the most part, a lot of the B vitamins. So if you're not getting the right intake and the right balance of those things, your right amount of proteins and fats and carbohydrates Mm -hmm. that then feed that system, you put yourself internally in a state not to be fully optimized to accept the postural corrective maneuvers that you're doing. So you're right. That that absolutely ties in beautifully to that. Well, uh, Dr. Griffith, tell us what is lying ahead for Dr. Griffith. What's, what, do you, what do you see on the horizon for yourself? Well, since I have been out in the practice world and exposed myself to the various modalities of healthcare, um, I, I currently work in an, a multidisciplinary, integrated type of model. I'm trying to reach out to the vast majority of folks that otherwise would not get exposed to chiropractic care. Mm-hmm through as many medium as possible. I see uh, in our group, and we have about 17 offices that I work in right now that help manage the practice and help develop programs and right. offer uh, health care alternatives. I'd like to see a gold standard uh, where all of the healthcare community can kind of not necessarily come together because not everybody plays nice. And right. there's right. differences in philosophy and there's differences in approaches, but I want the patients to know they have access to the care. Uh, I think some parts of the Affordable Care Act and even what Dr. Uh, uh, Donald Trump is trying to do and and flipping the healthcare model on its end right now, eventually at some point there's going to be a settling in. And I'd like to see chiropractic still be at the forefront of that instead of being behind it. Right. Like we've been for so long. So I'm, I'm looking to find a vehicle, a mechanism to put chiropractic in its part in healthcare, uh, so that it can withstand anything and everything that might come at it, whether it's right. a question about our ability to diagnose or a question ability to, to treat a patient or, or get more involved in the healthcare community. Not just a validation, uh, you know, as James Chestnut used to talk about for years and probably still to this extent uh, mm-hmm. does quite a bit even now. It, there's a validation for what we do, and it's proven over time to be a a better influence for right. patient care overall. Right. And I think, you know, with the foundation of chiropractic success, doing a fantastic job of getting positive press out there and having mm-hmm. all of these people back that up, it's time to operationalize that, right. I think. And so if you're asking me where I see myself, I want to be part of that operational standardization that improves the chiropractic delivery system into right. healthcare so that it can last for as long as it has and even more right. and become to the forefront at, alongside or next to or in front of or whatever you see it needs to be in terms of you know, working with our medical counterparts. But there needs to be an understanding of a true validation right. and a true response to what patients really need. Yeah, the they benefits. Want, yeah, they want to be out of pain. They want to be able to do what they want to do, and they don't want to have to cash those checks. That's right. That's right. Well, like uh, my... my um my dad said they just he just was content with the greatest generation to sit and rock. <laughs> now the uh, the baby boomers want to rock and roll, so that's a difference, and that I think bodes well for the future of chiropractic. Absolutely, we want to maintain our, maintain our functionality. Our guest today has been Dr. Dar Griffith talking about National Correct Posture Month and the effect that chiropractic has on overall good health. Dr. Dar, thank you so much for being our guest. Please tune in again for more to your health. Bye bye. 